You remember from um, when you've been doing uh, Equilibria, um, you remember the K values that you've been doing, KC, KW and all of that. You can do something very similar to these ligand substitution reactions uh, because they are in equilibrium as well. So, first of all, what is a ligand stability constant? Well, the definition, which we all take together, right? So, the stability constant which we actually call K stab of a complex ion is the equilibrium constant for the formation of a complex ion So, if we do a general example, e.g., let's say I had some metal, M, which is surrounded by six water molecules, and it was being replaced by six chloride ions, and it was in equilibrium, therefore, with M, Six. And what is M? M is just any metal. M is a metal. Uh, so what would be the what must be the charge on the metal there? Plus two. So what's going to be my overall charge here? Yeah, real. And I'm also going to make six H two O liquid. I could write a stability constant for that. So, in this example, K stab would equal. How am I going to handle those waters as a liquid? Do you, do you add pure states and equilibrium constants? So, you talked about if you've got a solid, you don't put that in an equilibrium constant, do you? Because you can't have a concentration. And this is equally. Is it going to make much difference having those waters there? So we're going to ignore that. So K stab is your product, which is MCl6 or minus aqueous. But remember, how do we represent concentrations? We put them in square brackets, don't we? <laughs> so. Over this guy. So it does get a little bit heavy on your square brackets. But the key thing is you've talked about, you know when you talked about using KW, things like that, so you ignore water. So you ignore that one there. Uh, so you're going to be really excited to hear that we can use um, a new form of equilibrium constant for these. So I'm going to now change this arrow to an equilibrium. And we can now use an equilibrium constant. So think back to your equilibrium constants. What oh, how was no. how what do you use? Okay. Yeah. Um so we're gonna use uh K again. We actually call this rather than KC, we call it K stab, which is nice. Stab. Stab. <laughs> Um, right, so how would we do this? We put products on the top and then react instead of the bottom. But 
Let's have a look as one of my products, I've got water. This is all in aqueous solution. Our six extra water molecules going to really change anything. When you think back, remember when you were looking at KW and things like that, you just ignored it, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to do that. That's the key thing, ignore the water. So K stab becomes, now this is where things get a little bit confusing. Because we put that in brackets, like square brackets, you've now got to put... Oh. Yeah. Okay, so there's a lot of square brackets going on over your reactants, which is going to be your concentration of the aqua complex, like so in big square brackets, times by the concentration of your chloride ions. But I've got four there, so I need to raise up the power of Four. So, try not to get confused with all these square brackets going on. And that's K stab. Uh, okay, so the stability constants, the larger your stability constant, the more stable your ligand, your complex is going to be. So, what we find is we, we find that if we have bidentate ligands, they generally form more stable complexes the monodentate ligands and the you know tridentate ligands are more stable. Can anybody think of why that could be the case? Instead of lots of individual molecules, so it's easy to break them off. You have to break two bonds to release each. Ligand. Yeah, you've got two um, holding points, haven't you? Um, which is much much harder. So. Um, so we find that they, and it also the stability constants. If they're just all monodentate ligands, it gives you an idea of the strength of the metal to ligand bond as well. Because if they're very strong, no, I meant ligand to metal bonds. If they're very strong ligand to metal bonds, it's going to be a more stable complex. So if they give you the choice of two monodentate ligands and one's got much higher stability constant, it means that that ligand is a better donor of its lone pair of electrons as well. So it gives you information about which one will form if you have a competition of ligands.